billiard ball like punch. Uh, however, uh, a more accurate and precise description of quanta is describe them not as uh, wave particles or particle light, but as energetic excitations or oscillations of fields, of quantum fields. Uh, this is what is done in quantum field theory. Hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm getting a, a message here that uh, my sound is not coming through so great. Um, let me just pause for a moment to make sure that uh, it's it's on, just not as loud. I just put okay. my earphones on, oh, I oh. Just, so I could hear you a little better. But okay. yeah, it's it's there, but not super. Loud. Um. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I've got the right microphone on my settings, so maybe if I turn the volume up. Uh, I don't know if uh, you'll have to let me know if you you can hear me any better. Okay. Um. Well, I'm seeing I'm seeing some messages that it's it's okay. Uh, so all right, um, I just want to make sure that uh, you can hear You're me. Good, William. Right. Just keep going. Okay. All right. Okay. We'll get back to it then. All right. Uh, so uh, we were looking at the idea that. Um, so. Uh, we shouldn't be looking at quanta as particles or as um, wave particle like little objects, but instead as excitations of a field. I uh, often called a, a quantum field because these are quantized harmonic oscillations of uh, these fields. Uh, so uh, uh, when you that, that that's a more precise and accurate way to view uh, what we call matter substance. It's an excitation of a field. We could actually even get um, more precise than that. That it's uh, uh, a, a vortex uh, dynamic in a. Uh, uh, super liquid medium. <laughs> uh, but uh, so th the idea now uh, is that uh, a, a fundamental outcome of quantum field theory is that these, these quantum fields are never truly uh, quiescent. There are always, there are, there are always constitutive energetic fluctuations occurring in these ubiquitous fields. And hence there's the prediction of an ever present non-zero energy in the vacuum state. In classical physics, a vacuum is totally devoid of energy or substance. In modern physics, however, all forces and associated particles are field-like, and their manifestation is a result of excitations of the respective quantum field. As such, according to quantum field theory, even in a vacuum, there are quantum fields. And importantly, these fields are always undergoing oscillatory excitations, even at the point where there should be zero energy. That is to say, there are constitutive zero point energy fluctuations. Uh, these quantum vacuum energy fluctuations are not trivial, they're non-trivial. For example, uh, as we are seeing in this simulation in the theory of quantum chromodynamics, vacuum fluctuations are what gives hadrons like the proton their mass. So this is a visualization of a quantum field theory calculation showing virtual particles in the quantum vacuum, and specifically for the strong interaction. Uh, even in supposed empty space, this vacuum energy is non-zero. What appears to be the ground state in one region of curved space will look different from the perspective of an, of an observer where the spatial curvature differs. differs. Uh, so, um, Uh, so th th this is depicting calculations of the energy fluctuations of the QCD vacuum generating a quark antiquark gluon condensate. And this is the energy that produces the strong interaction 
and hence the nuclear confinement force. So immediately, uh, our quantum vacuum fluctuations are, in conventional modern theory, are what give particles their mass. Uh, the so-called uh, Higgs mechanism accounts for uh, less than like 1% of the, the uh, mass contribution of the Hadron. Uh, I think I, I see a, a question. Um, Ken, did, did you have a question? Yeah, I was just curious. The, the simulation that we're looking at here seems to be relatively random in, in the way that this, this foam, quantum foam is kind of coming up. Would you say that according to the models that you and the sim are working with, that this dynamic would be accurate or would you would your model have a little bit more of a consistent particular flow? That's a really good point you make, a really good observation. Yeah, because, um, you know, I, I think that even with this particular uh, simulation, uh, it's more of a example that's being given. Uh, because um, e even within the more conventional uh, theory uh, approach uh, within our QCD, uh, the fluctuations are much more organized uh, within the proton itself. Uh, and certainly uh, within the work that we've done uh, with, uh, with Nassim Hermann, uh, the uh, fluctuations are highly coherent. Uh, in fact, um, and that coherence uh, would be observable if we, we had uh, a more precise or accurate depiction being shown here, it would be a vortex. Uh, it wouldn't be these random fluctuations. You would be seeing a like literal like tornado or hurricane looking uh, vortex structure. Uh, and, and actually, so, you know, that, that's the same uh, calculations that we have uh, are uh, a highly, highly coherent uh, state of those energetic oscillators. Uh, and it actually also in QCD, uh, it, it, um, it is seen as a a sustained spatiotemporal pattern of the fluctuations in a vortex-like structure. And so what really distinguishes free space, empty space from a particle where it looks like something's there, you've got the same energy density, the same amount of vacuum fluctuations, roughly, more or less. Uh, but the difference is that when those are highly coherent and in a sustained spatiotemporal pattern, like a vor vortex, particular motion, then it looks like there's something there. It looks like there's a particle there. And that's what distinguishes it from the, the more random fluctuations of free space, which would look more like this. It, it seems like going into this topic would be a whole lecture unto itself, so I don't want to take away from what you're talking about, but I yeah. think it's a fascinating area. Yeah, and it's it's a, a really salient point, though, that, that, to, to um, bring up. So, yeah, yeah. But uh, definitely, that could be a, another lecture, <laughs> another discussion. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Th thank you, William. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for the observation. Uh, so um, we, we have the theoretical basis for why we would expect there to be a non-zero energy value to even what is considered empty space. Uh, so we're understanding, we're beginning to understand that there really is no such thing as empty space. Uh, empty space has uh, a... Uh, intrinsic non-zero energy, the zero point energy density. Now, we know that this is the case. Uh, the substantive and energetic nation, nature of the quantum vacuum is real. And these are a few examples of how we know 
that these energetic fluctuations of space uh, are